Hello and welcome back to Real Analysis. And of course I want to thank all the nice people that support this channel on Steady or PayPal. Then in today's part 29 we will talk about the properties of continuous functions. As a reminder this is an example of a graph of a continuous function. Roughly it means we don't have jumps in the graph but there could be a lot of sharp edges. So please note smoothness is something we will define later. It's not in the definition of continuity. However, you also already know continuity was defined as a local property. So we take one point x0 and we look what happens around this point. Now the idea of continuity is that if the input in x wobbles a little bit, then the resulting values also only wobble a little bit. For this please recall we had two equivalent definitions. The first uses sequences and the second uses the epsilon delta criterion. However, of course, we don't want to use the formal definitions all the time because they need some work to verify. It's the same thing we did with sequences at the beginning of the course where we introduced the limit theorems. Therefore, instead of showing the definition all the time, we could just state the limit theorems to show convergence. And now we want to do a similar thing for continuous functions. Let's put that into one proposition. So what is needed here are two functions f and g with the same domain. Because then, for example, the sum of both functions is well defined as a new function with the same domain i. And of course the same holds for the product of both functions. So this is not so complicated, you can combine functions in this way by simply applying the operation to the values. In other words, these two graphs here give us a new graph there. Now the question is, what happens with the continuity when we fix one point x0 here? The result is not so surprising, if f and g are continuous at this point, then also f plus g. Of course, this is very helpful, if we put in continuity for both functions, we get out continuity for the addition. And in the same way, we get the continuity for the product. Now I can tell you, this is very simple to prove if you use the sequence definition for the continuity. Because then you just need to use the already known limit theorems. And then you might already recognize we can prove the same thing for the quotient of both functions. However, of course there the domain i will change a little bit. Nevertheless, for us the most important part is that g of x0 is not 0. So that's the only thing we need in addition, you can only divide if we exclude 0. Ok, so this is our result, we have different combinations of functions, but the continuity stays. This will be very helpful, therefore I advise you, try to write down the proofs. Now the next combination we should analyze is the composition of two functions. Composition means we first apply one function and then the other. Usually the picture looks like this, first comes g and then comes f. And the new map that comes out here we call f after g. And usually we denote that with a circle in between. An important thing here is you should read that from right to left. So first apply g and then f. Now here what we get is that continuity is also conserved under composition. Hence this is the next proposition we can state. Our input is again given by two functions. However, as the picture suggests above, we could have different domains. Therefore let's use a j for the function g. So in our picture we have j here and i here. Ok, now what you should see here is that g maps into the real numbers, but i does not need to be the whole real number line. Therefore we need one restriction here, such that the composition makes sense. This means that the whole range of g, also called the image of j under g, is a subset of i. And you see, to denote the image I use brackets here. In our picture this means that g does not map outside of this set here. Of course the range of g could be the whole set i, the important thing is we don't hit anything outside. Ok, now for the continuity we get if g is continuous and f is continuous, also the composition f after g is continuous. However, as before, we only have to put in continuity at one given point. And now it's x0 in the set j. 
For this reason, for the function f, we have to look at another point in the set i. And of course, this should be the image of x0 under g. As a reminder here, this is just one point, a value, therefore I used the round brackets. However, here we had a whole set and to distinguish both cases, I used the other brackets here. Okay, now for continuity, we put these two things in and we get out that the function f after g, defined on the domain j, is also continuous at the point x0. So this is our nice result here. Composition conserves continuity. It's formulated for one point x0, but as always we can lift that easily to all points. So if g and f are continuous at all points, then the composition is also continuous at all points. Indeed, this is a case we often have. Okay, now I think it's helpful to write down a proof here. It's also not so hard, but it's different from the ones above. Still, I want to use the sequence definition of continuity here. Hence, let's choose a sequence xn with members from j and limit x0. And now we consider the limit of the values of xn under the composition f after g. Next, we show that this exists and is exactly f after g of x0. First, let's use the definition of the composition, so we put g x n into f. And now we use the continuity of f, which means we can pull in the limit. Of course, we only know that f is continuous at g of x0, but this is exactly the point we put in here. This is immediately given because g is continuous at x0, so we can pull in the limit here as well. So in the end, we get f of g of x0. Hence what you see here in the end is the value of the function f after g at the point x0 is the same as the limit. And this is by definition continuity at x0. Okay, now in summary you see you can combine a lot of continuous functions and you don't lose the continuity. This is a very good result because continuity implies a lot of other nice properties. And that's exactly what the next videos will be about. Therefore, I hope I see you there and have a nice day. Bye.